Um, the second vote has been called for anyone who um, wants to go vote. I am going to go vote. I'm going to turn the gavel over to Senator Peters. And Senator Britt, you're next. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, thank you, Mr. General, for being in front of us today. I appreciate the topics that have been brought up from drug cartels to Mexico and the DEA to the fentanyl poisoning communities all across this nation to drug use and addiction. I stand ready to be a productive part of those conversations and work to move our nation for forward, keeping our communities safe and strong. Mr. General, I want to ask you about some questions when you testified in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee a couple of weeks ago. I am um, a big believer, and I've heard this all over the state of Alabama as I've traveled, people want justice to be blind. They believe that is a foundational building block of our nation, and until we restore that trust and confidence, um, you know, people are, are worried about the direction our nation will go. So you testified several weeks ago before the Senate Judiciary Committee and fielded a number of questions from committee members regarding DOJ's failure to prosecute any individuals who were involved in the illegal protest outside the homes of multiple Supreme Court justices in the aftermath of the leaked Dobbs opinion. As you are well aware, 18 U.S.C. 1507 makes it a crime to picket or parade near a residence occupied by a judge. It says, with the intent of influencing any judge, juror, witness, or court officer in the discharge of his duty. In answering the questions from multiple members of the committee, you repeatedly asserted that DOJ's failure to bring any charges under Section 1507 was due to the fact that the U.S. Marshals who were protecting the homes of the justices failed to make any arrest under that statute. You said, quote, the marshals have been advised and they know, and the marshals on the ground, they have full authority to arrest people under any federal statute, including that federal statute, end quote. That was in direct reference to section 1507. You went on to say, the attorney general does not decide whether to arrest the marshals on the scene. They do make the decision of whether to arrest. After your appearance before the Judiciary Committee, we obtained copies of the slide deck that was used to train and prepare the marshals for their protective detail at the homes of the justices. Those training materials show that the marshals likely didn't make any arrest under Section 1507 for a pretty simple reason. They were actively discouraged from doing so. As you can see on the slide behind me, the marshals were explicitly told to avoid, unless absolutely necessary, any criminal enforcement action involving the protester. The slides went on to say, they explicitly state that making arrest and initiating prosecutions was not the goal of the marshal's presence at the homes of the justices, and the not was actually italicized and underlined. The next slide directs the marshals not to engage in protest-related enforcement actions beyond those that were strictly and immediately necessary and tailored to ensure the physical security of the justices. If you'll see in the next slide here, it discourages the marshals from making arrest under any section 1507 by asserting that there may be a First Amendment right to harass the families of the judges and by concluding that any arrest of protesters are a last resort to prevent physical harm of the justices. Mr. Attorney General, yes or no, were you at any point before your testimony in front of the Judiciary Committee aware of these training materials or the fact that the marshals had been heavily discouraged from making arrest under Section 1505? I think this is the first time I've seen the slide deck, and frankly, from here, I can't make it out, uh, for which I apologize for my eyesight, but I can't, can't make it out. Um, what I said uh, before was correct there. First and principal job is to protect the lives and property of the of the um, of the um, members of the court, um, and as I said at the time, um, first attorney general has ever ordered the marshals to protect the residences uh, of the justices and to protect them 24/7. Yes. Uh, that's their principal responsibility, uh, but that doesn't mean that that uh, other that uh, they are in any way precluded from. Um, uh, bringing other kinds of arrests. So thank you so much, Mr. Attorney General. I do have another question for in a few moments, but when you say they were given the full authority to arrest people violating Section 1507, 
I would ask, will you take a look at these slides, these materials, dig into them? It is clear that these marshals were given directives that limited, that narrowed the scope. Of course, we all want the physical safety. Um, the physical safety of our Supreme Court justice is paramount, and we thank you for sending those marshals there. 1507, though, actually is more all-encompassing than that narrowly tailored, objective, uh, narrowly tailored objective. And it says picketing or parading near a building or housing, if you're doing it with the intent to interfere with, obstruct, or impede the administration of justice or influencing any judge in the discharge of his duty. It's clear when you look at these slides that the marshals were not given those directives. I would like for you to take a look at that. And if you agree with that statement, um, I'd like for you to amend your testimony to the Judiciary Committee. Well, I, I, there's nothing for me to amend because, I've, as I said, I've never seen those slides before. I d I know I need to yield my time. Um, it's clear the marshals were given a different directive, and I would ask you to look into that, please. I will. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Britt. Attorney General Garland, good to see you here uh, today, and uh, thank you uh, for your 